For the longest time ever, I've really wanted to be able to have a proper Home Assistant application on my Echo Show. And when I say a proper application, what I really mean is basically like the mobile app that's on your phone. I want this on the Echo. In fact, I actually want this exact thing. I want the Home Assistant app on the Echo Show. But because of how Amazon is and how the Fire OS works, it's just super restrictive and it's super locked down. So that isn't going to happen anytime soon. But Home Assistant, if you are watching, if you could just take the design and form factor of the Echo Show, just don't infringe on their copyright, uh, take that and take the VPE and just kind of smush these together, then uh, yeah, I'd, I'd buy that. I'd, I'd probably buy two. Probably more. Probably more. And I know what you're probably thinking and probably what a few people are going to say. Uh, why don't you just access Home Assistant through the Silk Browser? And yeah, you can use the Silk Browser, but in my experience and with my testing of using the Silk Browser, it's not the same as having a proper Home Assistant application. You don't get all of the companion features that you get with a mobile application. The Silk Browser expires and it's also quite sluggish. And this is all again because this is all running on top of that Fire OS. The other thing that I could do is I could take this idea of taking the VPE and the Echo Show and smushing them together. I could take this idea and I could run with it myself. I could design and create my own thing. But for me personally, I don't have that time to test and tinker and manufacture and develop a brand new product. But if I was to do that, then I would go all out. I'd design and create the enclosure. I'd design and custom build some kind of PCB. And I'd probably use some kind of service like today's video sponsor, which is PCBWay. PCBWay is your one-stop shop for CNC, 3D printing, PCB design and assembly, and much, much more. You can make use of their on-demand services such as 3D printing or PCB design and have your products professionally manufactured and assembled. Some of the cool projects that I've used PCBWay for on the channel are the manufacture of these custom PCBs that fit directly inside of your Google Nest Minis, which allow you to have full local control. What's nice about PCBWay is that when you place an order, you get a full insight into your product's current state and the process that it's currently in, and then it gets delivered straight to your door. So if you've got a cool project or a cool idea that you want to see brought to life, then check out PCBWay today. Sadly though, this device doesn't exist, or it doesn't exist yet, because it'll exist when Nabucasa make this exact thing that I'm talking about. You should definitely do this Home Assistant. But until then, we're left with just the Echo, but I did find something really cool the other week. A few weeks ago, I discovered this really cool bootloader exploit project, which specifically targets the first generation Echo Show 5, and it allows you to unlock the bootloader on the Echo, and then root the device. This means you can gain full ADB access and start sideloading applications like Oh, Angry Birds. <laughs> like Home Assistant. Currently, this exploit only works on the first generation Echo Show 5s, so it won't work on any newer devices that you have, or at least at the time of recording this, it doesn't currently work with those. But what is really cool about this is the fact that we can have that reality of having Home Assistant on the Echo, even if it is an older Echo. The other really cool thing about this is the fact that you can actually remove the Fire OS entirely, and you can install a brand new operating system. This project and the instruction set have all been put together by Roger Ortiz and there's a full guide available on how to actually set this up for yourself if it's something that you wanted to do. So full credit goes to Roger and all of the guys over at the XDA forums that are just helping and contributing to actually get this thing working. It's really cool that you've actually managed to get this all running on an Echo Show 5. If you're making use of this exploit, then you've basically got two different methods that you can use to install the Home Assistant app on your Echo Show. I should also point out that if you follow along with any of these exploits, then you can potentially brick your device, which will just totally render it dead and make it useless, so follow along at your own expense. As I mentioned, there's two different methods you can use. They are similar, but they are different. They're effectively the red pill and the blue pill. If you take the red pill, you're going to retain the same functionality with your Amazon Echo, so the voice assistant and all of that other good stuff, but you're going to be able to make use of a custom launcher and sideload all of your own applications. If you take the blue pill then, you're going to be able to actually wipe the operating system off entirely and install your own operating system. There are pros and cons to both of these different approaches, so let's take a look at both of them now. With both processes, you're going to be making use of Roger's AmmoNet tool, which is going to perform the boot ROM exploit. And if you are going to brick the device, it's at the point of running this tool where this is going to happen. So if you get past this point, then you're going to be good to go. If we choose the red pill then, we're choosing to sideload all of our applications. 
This process involves running through a series of ADB commands in order to root the device and enable third party apps. You can then pretty much just push any of your applications that you want to install and you can add your own custom launcher to make it look and feel less Amazon-y. This works well and with the Home Assistant app side loaded you can sign in and start viewing your dashboards, controlling the things and just doing all the normal Home Assistant-y things. Inside of the companion app you can also expose the device's sensors, however a lot of them are still quite restricted and locked down due to the way that the Fire OS works, but a lot of them you actually won't even care about anyway because the device is static and doesn't move anywhere so a lot of the sensors are kind of redundant anyway because it's not a mobile phone. One of the cool things about opting to use this approach is the fact that you retain all of the normal Amazon things. So you can make use of your voice still, so you can still activate the voice assistant, you can control your lights, you can turn things on and off, you can play music and yeah, basically do anything that you previously could do, but now you can actually view Home Assistant and use the Home Assistant app. Alexa? Turn on the office light. Although being able to have the Home Assistant app and still making use of the normal Amazon voice control is pretty cool, there are some issues that I've had with this. For a start, the Home Assistant app can sometimes be a bit sluggish, and this is due to the nature of the Fire OS. Basically, we're still running Fire OS on the bottom and everything else is over the top, so it's just Amazon just chugging away. Another issue that I've had is that the Paladin launcher, which is Amazon's normal launcher, so the normal UI that you see whenever you're using the shows, even though you actually deactivate this to make use of your own custom launcher, this can sometimes re-enable itself and just take over, meaning you're going to lose that custom launcher and then you have to relaunch it, and this is a bit of a pain. There is a workaround for this, you can just rename the file for the actual Paladin launcher, you can write a script to block it, or you can perform other types of blocks, so you can stop this, it's not a big killer. But the thing that is an issue, and you can also probably change, I haven't done it, but you can definitely do this, is that when you have the Home Assistant app open, it doesn't respond to any brightness control changes, and the screen never times out, so... It is cool that you've got Amazon Echo voice controls and Home Assistant, but you've got this big blare in light that's probably going to be in your face and you can't turn off, so without any intervention, it's always on. What about the blue pill then? If you decide to make use of the second method, rather than just sideload everything on top of Fire OS, instead what you actually end up doing is just totally removing Fire OS and instead installing a new custom build of the Lineage OS, which has been made specifically to work with the Echo Show 5. If you're not familiar with the Lineage OS, and I hope that I'm saying it right, Lineage, Lineage. If you aren't familiar with it, it's an open source variant of Android which runs on a bunch of different devices, now including the Echo Show 5. Installing Lineage OS removes the Fire OS totally, and it gives you an Echo Show device that essentially just thinks it's an Android tablet. On its initial boot, you'll run through the setup like you would any other Android tablet, so you'll set its Wi-Fi, you'll set its location, give it a name, and just do all of that normal stuff. The Echo Show just now thinks it's an Android tablet, and with that, you can just do normal Android things. Once you've got the device set up and booted, you've basically got a clean slate, so from here you can do things like enable ADB in the developer menus, you can then sideload applications, you can install pretty much anything you want, you can even put the Play Store on there if you want. If you compare using the Home Assistant app on this Lineage build compared to the previous method, then the Home Assistant app is way snappier and it's much quicker. You can also make use of a few extra features like you can use the full screen mode and you can also expose more of the sensors if that's something that you wanted to do because you've got more access to the actual Android system itself. The other nice thing that this version has over the previous version is the fact that the screen timeout and all of that stuff just works out of the box. So it's just using the normal system screen time so I think after a minute of no contact then the screen will just turn off. On top of the Echo you've got the mute button and this basically works as your lock and unlock button so when the device goes to sleep you can just press that button and Home Assistant appears. Some of the pros of using this approach are the fact that everything is just faster and snappier and this will be down to the fact that it's not running that Fire OS and doing all of the other Fire OS things. Some of the negatives, which again, might not be negatives for you if you don't care, but there might be if you do, are the fact that you've lost all of that Amazon stuff, so not able to make use of your voice and get the Amazon Echo to do whatever it was doing before because that's totally been wiped off. If you care, then you care, and if you don't, you don't. <laughs>
With the current build of Lineage, the version that I've actually got installed on this device at the moment, it is actually considered to be experimental just because some of the features are either missing or just haven't fully been implemented yet. Some of the ones on that list are things like the microphone and also the camera. With the camera, I'm not too fussed about this one, but it would be cool to have it so that I can expose it as a sensor. And with the microphone, I do really want this one because I plan on using that to actually get Home Assistant Assist working. And then I've got a device that I can view the Home Assistant dashboard on, and I could also use Assist. Another feature that is missing from this device is the touching the screen to wake the device up. Currently you can't do that, I don't know if there's plans for that or if it's on that list, I'd have to read the list again, but it'd be cool to be able to just touch the device and have it wake up. At the moment, when the device goes to sleep, the only way that you can wake it up is just by touching the mute button on the top, which is absolutely fine and does work really well, but it's probably easier at night time to just tap the screen and just have it come on, so it'd be cool to see that. But there we go guys, that's been a little look at Home Assistant running on the Echo Show 5. If you've got any questions about either of these builds or any of the processes, then let me know what they are in the comments below. I've actually been working on the full walkthrough video which will show you the full setup and install for these, so if you are interested in those then also let me know in the comments below, and also just comment which one you actually want to see, that way I'll know which one to actually prioritise and get done first. If you have enjoyed this video then don't forget to drop me a like and if you aren't already hit that subscribe button and ding dong the notification bell you'll then be alerted to any future video that I do and as always a massive thank you to these awesome dudes these awesome dudes are my patreons and also my youtube members and if you are interested in helping support my channel which in turn allows me to buy little products like this and just create videos like this then you'll find links to all the places that you can go to support me all in the description below thank you for watching and I'll catch you in the next one cheers